Well, good, good morning. I was trying to time that a little bit better. What I mean is, I wanted to be black, and then when I, the light comes on, I'm up here, so you can't see me in the dark. But anyway, that didn't work out so well. Anyway, it's good to see you this morning. I hope everybody's doing well. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Amen. It's, a, it's, it's good to be, I'm just saying, it's good to be with people who love God, who worship God, and, and who are just going after God with everything on the inside of them. Somebody's like, are you talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. Uh, I believe that this is a season that God is getting ready to, he's, he's already, he's pouring his spirit out on all flesh. Uh, we've been talking about miracles, we've been talking about prayer, and I just know that God has something good in store for you. Today. Say today. Today, today God's got something good in store for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. You, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that, uh, but I kind of did. You do drive crazy, <laughs> but I enjoy it. Enjoy, anybody ever ridden with you? I, yeah, yeah, exactly. One time we were riding together and Terry did, Terry was, uh, I pulled out, I got out of my side and Terry got on his side. I got out and kissed the ground <laughs> because the guy drives very fast. But anyway, I love you. You're one of my favorite persons, people, people in the world. Yeah, well, you do a great job. <laughs> But it's good. Hey, listen, Terry and Susan are on their, on their cruise this morning, so you guys are stuck with me. But uh, I wanted to take some time. Can we take some time to pray for them? Um, I, he called me the day he was leaving, and uh, he was like, hey. I was like, hey, are you ready? He goes, yeah. He goes, I said, are, are you ready? He goes, yeah, man. I'm, he goes, I don't know. He goes, I hadn't been on a cruise before. It's my first time being on a cruise. I was like, well, you're going to have a great time. It's like, it's going to be good. He goes, I don't know. I go, I'm telling you, you're just going to have a great time. Our prayer is, is that you want to come back to us, you know, that you don't feel a call to be over there eating that Mediterranean food or wherever it is you are. It's like, he's like, yeah, I'll be back. But anyway, so we're going to pray for him this morning. Would you join in and pray with me? So Lord, we thank you this morning for Terry and Susan. We, we just pray, God, that your angels that are surrounding them, that are around them this morning, I pray that you would protect them, keep them. Uh, there'd be no nausea, but I pray for a relaxing, phenomenal time in you, God. I pray, Lord, you surround them with your presence, Lord. He, they are carriers of your presence. But I'm thankful, Lord, uh, that today, Lord, all the time while they're, while they're away, I pray, Lord, that you bless them spiritually, physically, uh, all the way around, Lord. Just come back refreshed, uh, renewed. Uh, and I just pray that you, you would. Just, just, they would have just a relaxing time. They'd come back and just, and just uh, tell what a wonderful time that they had. Uh, I pray for downloads of your goodness, downloads of, your, of who you are, what you're wanting to do everything, Lord, while they're on this trip, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, <clears throat> one of the things that, uh, that if you haven't been here, I listened to Pastor Terry's message. I wasn't here last week. I was uh, doing a kids camp in Arkansas, uh, and I was, um, I was with my parents, and then they were with me doing it. We did, we did a kids camp. There was about 50 kids from ages um, they were kindergarten all the way to like sixth grade. We went to Lake Degray, and I did this camp for them. And, uh, and I preached at, at, at the church. And uh, one of the things that I, before I got, I got up, they said, um, I said, man, I'm going to be preaching on miracles, and I'm going to be preaching on prayer. And they go, no way. What do you think we've been, we've been talking about for the beginning of the year? I go, I don't know. We've been talking about miracles, and we've been talking about prayer. And I was like, wow. It's like they, they said that God has not just released them. They said every time they try to go somewhere else, every time they try to talk about something else, they go they, that God's dragging them back into prayer and then talking about miracles. And they said the same thing that we, we've been talking about. They're like, look, God is doing something. He's releasing miracles because everybody in our congregation, somebody is trusting God to do something that they cannot do themselves. Right? If you're breathing, if you're in here, if you can see me, there's something in your life <laughs> that you are trusting God to do for you that you cannot do for yourself. It's the reason why we have faith. And, the, and, and to top it all off, I would go as far as to say the reason why we have faith and the reason why we worship, the reason why we clap our hands, the reason why we dance, the reason why we come to church is because some of us have been through things in our life that we couldn't do for ourselves, and he came through for us. Anybody in here know what I'm talking about? Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap if that's you this morning, that he's done something for you. Yeah, he has done something for you. 
And the reason why, though, I, I think that we, we, Pastor Terry was like, well, what are you going to talk about? He goes, I think we beat the miracle thing to death. I go, no, I, I'm, I got one more. I got one more that I want to talk about because you guys are stuck with me for the next three weeks. <laughs> Today, next two weeks, you're stuck with me. So you might as well settle in and be like, for real? Do we have to? Yes, you do. <laughs> so settle in. But the truth is, I want to talk about this because somebody asked me uh, here recently, they were just talking about it. It's like, I want to see a miracle. Like, I just really want to see one. How many of you appreciate Miss Hunter this past, uh, this past Wednesday night? Anybody, if, was, if you were here, if you weren't here, I, I, if you weren't here, I, I advise you to get the tape. She was amazing. Uh, there were some, just some real miracles that happened. I mean, it was just, <laughs> my favorite one was the lady who was, she was like, whoa, something's happening. I don't know what's going on. She started getting happy about her hand getting healed. And she, she was just mellow as can be, but she's like, uh-oh, something's happening. And she goes, and Ms. Jones just, so she's like, yep, that's the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm just like, man, that should be normal for us. Don't you believe that? We should walk in that enormous, because when I read the Bible and read all the Acts in the New Testament, it would say that people were amazed and they were astonished. But to us, we should live in the time of just miracles, right? We should just be walking around and be like, yeah, that's my daddy. That's just, that's what my daddy does. He does miracles. That's just, that's him. We should be able to recognize him. Yep, he does, because, yep, he, that's him. He does miracles. He's great. He does miracles. Yep, that's him. I recognize him because he's, that's what the, the Old Testament, all the other, the heathen nations, they were like, man, we've heard of some gods. We've heard of some crazy gods. We've never heard of a God like yours. Man, we've heard some stuff. Man, there's some things that we have to do. There's some things that we've never heard of a God like yours. What's that? Who acts on the behalf of those who wait for him. Oh, that's us. That's, that's me. That's my dad. That's what he does. I love it when uh, my kids don't know that I'm looking or thinking that, that I'm around or anywhere, and they say things about me that, that are true, that are good. Now, sometimes they say things about me, and be like, hey, don't be telling people that, you know? Like, <laughs> my dad could eat a whole box. Anyway, so I'm saying if you... <laughs> but when they were little, they would say things like, man, my, I saw my dad pick up a whole, you know, whatever it is. He's so strong or whatever. My daddy can beat up your dad. I mean, they would say things like that. And I would just be like, that's right, tell them. Well, my daddy did, you know, this. And be like, my, they love to brag on their dads. Why? Who do we boast in? We don't boast in, in horses or chairs. We don't boast in the things of this world. We boast in the name of our God because he's powerful. He's amazing. He's good. Right? We trust in him. We sing songs that say things like, he'll never let us down. He'll never let us down. I got, he's a good, good father. So good, got to say it twice. So nice, got to say it twice. He's a good, good father. We sing these songs about how, how amazing and how great he is. And so we get to boast in him because he is God. And he does, he comes through, he comes through for us. But what is the purpose of miracles? This is asked me, why do you want to see a miracle? They were like, because. But there's no reason. It's like, why do you want to see a miracle? Well, in, in, the, in the Old Testament when he, and in the New Testament, you see a pattern of miracles of what God, what he would do for his people. And so there was a purpose behind it, right? There's a reason why God performed miracles. He just, he's like, well, Maybe he just did miracles just because he's God. Yeah, he can do that, but there's a purpose behind it. So I'm going to talk to you this morning about the purpose of miracles, right? We're going to end the series talking about the purpose of miracles. And next week, I'm going to come with you with something else. The purpose of miracles. So let's pray. God, I want to thank you that right now, those of us that are going through something that need a revelation of who you are today, I pray that you would penetrate their hearts. You would change the way that we think. Change the way that we see even you, Lord. If there's any way that we're seeing you and there's an eclipse, there's something that is, that is blocking a view of you that we have not seen, would you remove that this morning so that we can see you clearly? We can see you for who you are and that we can bless your name. We can trust you and know that you are God. Not only that you're God, but you're our Father. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.
One of the things that's been amazing to me is we've been talking about miracles, but it's caused me to go back and read some of the Old Testament stories, right? Because the Bible says faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So I'll go back and I'll read the stories. And like I tell you, when I read the stories, I don't just, I don't just read them like a novel, but I try to put myself in the place, in the place of the story. I, I put myself in those stories. Like uh, I can smell Jesus cooking the fish on the shore, uh, I can smell the fish that they caught. I'm there. I put myself there. I'm asking, I'm, you know, I got my eye on Judas. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm looking at him like, yeah, keep your hands out of my pocket. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a place. I'm always thinking about, I, I'm, I'm in the line uh, or I'm sitting down with the people with the, when he's feeding the 5,000. I'm in the head of the line. I'm in front of the line um, trying to get the fish and the loaves. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm there. I put myself in the stories. And you should too. You should put yourself in the stories. Don't just read it just to be reading it, but just like God, just, just what are you trying to reveal to me? And so it's caused us to go back, caused me to go back and read those stories. And it builds faith. I'm telling you what, it builds faith because there's crazy miracles in the Bible, crazy stuff that had happened in the Bible, right? And one of the things that we try to do is we try to teach that to your kids when they, in children's ministry, we teach those, we teach Bible stories because we want them to know what God has done. So I want to read to you real quick for or get into some of their, some of their interpretations of Bible stories that have happened. Uh, in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, uh, God got tired of creating the world, so he took the Sabbath off. Uh, Adam and Eve were created from an apple tree. Noah's wife was called Joan of Arc. Uh, Noah built an ark, which the animal came to him in pairs, P-E-A-R-S. Uh, Lot's wife was a pillar of salt by day, but a ball of fire by night. Uh, she was crazy. Anyway, so Samson, listen to this. Samson was a strong man who let himself be led astray by Jezebel like, Je like Delilah. Samson slayed the Philistines with an ax of the apostles. Moses led the Hebrews to the Red Sea where they made unleavened bread, which is bread made without ingredients. The Egyptians were all drowned in the, de in the desert. Uh, afterward, Moses went up on Mount Sinai. <laughs> he went up on Mount Sinai. <laughs> he came down, I hope. <laughs> to get the Ten Amendments. Uh, the first commandment was when Eve told Adam to eat the apple. The fifth commandment is to humor thy father and mother. The seventh commandment is thou shalt not admit adultery. Uh, <laughs> Moses died before he ever reached Canada. Then Joshua led the Hebrews into the battle of Jericho. Bunch of old, anyway. Um, David was a Hebrew king skilled at playing the lyre, and he fought with the Finkelsteins, a race of people who lived in biblical times. Solomon, one of David's sons, had 300 wives and 700 porcupines. Brother had porcupines. Uh, the people who followed the Lord were called the 12 decibels, and the epistles were wives of the apostles. I did not know that. Um, one of the opossums, one of the opossums was St. Matthew, who was by profession a taxi man. <laughs> Last but not least, this one says, the greatest miracle in the Bible is when Joshua told his son to stand still and he obeyed him. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It's funny, but the truth is, is that the Bible stories, they, they cause uh, life to, and faith to come. And when we read them, but think about this, though, if we, if we track, and I don't want to be the one that says everyone knows a story because that's the worst thing that a preacher could ever say is everybody knows a story because I don't want to assume that you know the story. But I do want to encourage you to go back and read those stories in the Bible because simply because when, when you read them, you would see that when Jesus uh, did a miracle or there's miracles done in the Old Testament, you would see that there was purpose behind it. He would say, go and sin no more. Or he would say things like, um, pick up, take, up your, take your bed and walk, or peace be unto you, or, or your faith has made you whole. But there, in the encounter of that miracle, there was a transformation that happened. 
See, God is not interested in just performing miracles so that we can be amused. It's not about entertainment. He's not trying to entertain us. What he's trying to get us to understand is that he is working in us both to, to do and to will, both to will and to do for his great pleasure. He is transforming us. Every time there was a miracle, the person on the other end of the miracle was transformed. They were changed. They were, they were changed. And sometimes when he would do those miracles, no matter what it was, whether he spit in the ground and rubbed it in somebody's eye, or whether he, whatever it is, healed lepers, whatever it was, 5,000, whatever it was, there was try, he was wanting to move us from a place of relationship with him. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's moving us from, to a relationship with him because what it causes me to do when God does a miracle for me, when he does something in my life that I cannot do for myself, is there's an invitation on my end for me to trust him even more. There's an invitation for me to trust him more and more and more. I remember when my kids were learning to walk and they, they would stand up. They would stand up fine, but as I would leave, they'd sit down. And I would get up to them, they'd stand up, and I would leave. But there would be a day when I would, I, would, I, would, I would invite them, and they would do that Frankenstein walk, you know the one I'm talking about? And, 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 I would, and you know, people would laugh at that, but that, that's us sometimes when God is like, come on, come on. I want you to trust me. I want you to trust me. We're doing that. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What I, and obviously, he was just, come on, just trust me. You know, I remember when Angie learned how to walk, and she was learning, she cried the whole time she was walking. But I was excited because she was walking and she was like, ah, freaking out. She's like, ah, I'm like, come on, come on, come on. Because she, she was thinking daddy was trying to fake her out. You were here. Now you're moving away from me. Where do you think you're going? It's like, I'm right here. And she was crying the whole time. She was doing that, that walk thing. And, 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 and I was excited about it, but she was crying the whole time. But I'm like, look at you, you're walking. And that's some of us. Some of us are doing that faith walk where we're just like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What, 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 God, where are you? And he's like, I'm right here. I'm right here. Just trust me. I'm right here. But I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. You're walking. That's what's going on. You're moving forward. That's what's going on. You're moving out of the place that you were in. That's what's going on. You're, I'm causing you to move out of that place where, that, of, 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 of destitution that you were in, that place where I didn't want you. And you're rising up and you're going places that you've never gone before simply because I'm inviting you into a relationship of trust. And that relationship is going to sustain you because you know my word says that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And it's an ugly walk sometimes, right? <laughs> it doesn't look right. But sooner or later, what happened? This angel was walking and getting into everything. Amen? amen. <laughs> Looking at some friends. Yes, amen. Walking and just getting into everything. So it was nothing for her. And some tell you what, some of you may be in that place right now. We're just like, I don't know what it looks like. God is like, there's an invitation. Sooner or later, you find yourself just walking by faith and not by sight. You'll find yourself keep on just walking and walking in the things that God has for you. Amen? And these miracles cause that to happen. Turn your Bibles to, to uh, Colossians chapter 1. Here's what you need to understand. The greatest miracle that ever happened had to be when it's just the greatest miracle is what God accomplished with his son on the cross. So what it says, verse uh, chapter one, verse 19. For in him, the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all things. Say all things. Reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, that's us, who were once, alien, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, that's us. He has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you a holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable. Everybody say stable. And steadfast. Say steadfast. Not shifting, that's us, from the hope of the gospel that you heard which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I, Paul, became a minister. This is what God is wanting to do in us. He is wanting to bring us into a place where we're trusting him, that we're stable, 
that he's calling us, where we're not shifting, not being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. He's causing us to be bringing us to a place of trust and intimacy with him, where we're not worried about and trying to figure out uh, where we're not tossed to and fro by, by everything else, with the thoughts that come into our mind that tell us that he doesn't love us, that tell us that he's not there, that tell us, if God loved me, if you really love me, God, then why am I going through the things that I'm going through? If you really love me, God, then why am I experiencing this? Why is this pain going on? Why is my marriage like this? Why is my why are my finances this way? Why, why, why? And that's the wrong question for us to be asking. Why is always a wrong question to, for us to be asking God? The question is how? How are you going to bring me out of this, God? How do you want me to trust you, God? How are you? I know you're going to do it because you never let me down. And you're, you said you never leave me nor forsake me. And I know that you're for me and that you've gone before me. And that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that you raise a standard up against me. I know that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. But every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I condemn. I know that your angels are given charge over me. They bear me up with their hands so that I won't dash my feet against a stone. I know all those things, God. But how? How are you going to do it? What, do, what are you wanting me to do? How am I to trust you? What do you want me to do? How are you wanting me to trust you in this moment? How are you bringing me out? Because I know that my trust is in you. It's not in things. It's not in people. It's not in the arm of the flesh, but my trust is in you, God, because I know that in whom I have believed that he is able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. I know in whom I have believed and it's you, God. Some trust in the horses, some trust in the chariots, but I'm going to trust in the name of my God. Now, it sounds good, but I'm telling you, there's times when it gets hard. Do you understand me? I remember when uh, I was selling this um, in, in the first service, but uh, when Luke had asthma and, and we were, and we were just, it was, he was having to go to the hospital. We were spending a lot of money on him going to the hospital and he, and he just couldn't breathe. And I'm like, son, what does it feel like? He's like, it feels like you're, 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 you're out of breath and you're breathing through a straw to get your breath. He goes, you can't breathe. It was just asthma, just so bad. He'd be wheezing in the night, coughing real bad. And I just, you know, and I'm gonna tell you this. One of the hardest things for a dad is just looking there at your kid and, and, and you feel powerless. It's the worst feeling in the world to me because dad's supposed to be able to fix stuff, right? Even if I can't fix it, I'll call somebody to fix it and get them out of the house for everybody that comes home so they can think dad fixed it. You know what I'm saying? I, dad's just, that's just what it is. But it's a, it's a painful experience to have a son who, who, who's, who is sick and you can't do anything about it. And I, began, I went to the Lord. I was like, God, I, I, want, I want my son to be healed. He, we, he wanted to play baseball. He couldn't play baseball. He wanted to play football. Couldn't play football. Couldn't do anything. Couldn't do those things. And in the middle of the night, I had to rush him to the hospital. I called Terry. I was like, Terry, I don't know what to do. He's like, we're just going to pray. We continue to pray, pray for him or whatever. And finally, I just got to a point where I just like, God, I, I'm, I don't know what to do. So then we would load up on all this medication, Right? We go to the food pharmacy. I mean, I, I should buy stock in CVS pharmacy because all the money that we spend on medicine and we go. Over, and then anybody ever experiences where you go get the medicine and the side effects are worse than the thing that you're trying to get. Right. One of the side effects is shortness of breath. I'm like, he's got asthma. <laughs> How in the world? <laughs> side effects cause maybe cause death. You know what I'm saying? Well, good gracious, you know. I mean, one time not too long ago, I got, I was queasy and I had this pain. That was just, it, was, it, was, it was not the pain in my side. It was something else. So just pain. And I went on, never go to WebMD, right? <laughs> never go to WebMD. I was like, what is this? And it was, I knew it was just something I ate. It was like cancer. I'm like, good night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> cancer can't be cancer. Stop eating those sausages. You know what I'm saying? It's just... <laughs> gas, you know, but all of a sudden you're going to die of cancer. So stop doing that. Don't ever do that. You know, but we do that sometimes, right? Because the enemy tries to get us to be, to, to waver off of the place, waver off of the, the faith that we know. He, the enemy is since day one, since even Adam and Eve, he's always trying to get us off of the place that God has already destined us to have. He's always trying to move you off of that place. He's trying to get you. Did God say, is God good? Is he really good though? Is he really amazing? Is he really the God that you sing about? Is he really that? The answer is yes and then some because the promises of God are yes and amen through Christ Jesus. And God is a man that the Bible says, and Terry specifically said that he, as he quoted, he's a, he's a God that he cannot lie and he cannot fail. I will put all my eggs in that basket. I will put 
all my trust in the Lord because I know that my God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I could ask or think according to the power that's working on the inside of me. Amen? And if he's working on the inside of me, he's working on the inside of you. Right? So we begin to pray. And I'm telling you what, I just like, and God just asked me, one time he just said, he, I said, God, what are we, we going to do? He said, do you trust me? I was like, yes, I trust you. God, that's a crazy question. And then, you know, I thought about that after I said it. If God asked a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. Right? He, he knows that I'm wavering. He knows where I am. He asked a question. And he said, do you really, do you believe that I'm good? It's like, yes, God, I believe that you're good. And if there's any place in my life that I've not believed that you're good, if there's any place in my life that I've been wavering, if there's any place in my life where I've not believed, any place in my life where, I, where my mind has, has told me that, that you're not good, and any place in my spirit, any place that I've not gone, and it's an invitation, any place that I've not taken the invitation for me to trust you, God, I'm going to RSVP to the invitation for you, me to trust you, with everything on the inside of me. Amen? So sooner or later, sooner or later, Luke was like, I want a bicycle. Like, boy, you don't need a bicycle. What do you need a bike for? He goes, because I, I want to ride it? I was like, well, you can't do that. He buys a bicycle because his mama convinced him he needs a bicycle. Or he, or he wants to, he wants to he take karate. And you don't need to take karate? Yes, I do. You're a big, big dad. I need to take karate. Or, or he takes certain things. I'd be like, listen, you can't do these things. You ever, you ever pray for something and then try to, because you've been programmed so long to believe the negative, that you, you are so there that when God starts answering your prayer, you think it's a lie. So he started answering. He started answering. That's happened to me. He started answering it. Luke began to start doing stuff, start moving around, start being athletic. He started doing all this stuff. And I started going, get in the house. Take your breathing treatment. Did you take your medicine? He goes, Dad, I hadn't had my inhaler for a long time. You get in there right now and take that inhaler. He's like, I don't need it. He, I, you get, well, what did I say? Get in there and take that inhaler. And so the Holy Spirit just was like, hey, hey, McFly. <laughs> Bueller, McFly. I've healed him. He's healed. And I didn't even realize it. And Luke got on his bike. He goes, man, I went for two miles. I went for this. Listen. God is healing him. God healed him. And he's off. He's doing everything. And so I was like, let's stop. Let's worship God. Let's praise. Let's worship God because of what God's done in his life. He's totally healed. Totally healed. Doing stuff crazy because God is who he says he is. At some point, you got to trust him. At some point, you got to trust him. Amen? So what does God do miracles, though? Chris, why does is, why is he do them? Sometimes he does them just because he can, because he likes to show off in front of his kids. He does that sometimes. Sometimes he does it just because he loves us. Purpose of miracles, and it's about relationship. I don't know if this ever happens at your house, um, but at our house, it gets chaotic sometimes, and we, everybody has bad attitudes. Kids have a bad attitude. The girls have a bad attitude against, against each other. The boys have a bad attitude. I have a bad attitude. Vanessa never has a bad attitude because she's watching, um, and so therefore I'm not going <laughs> to... Literally, I said this first service, she texted me and said, I am watching. I said, I got, on, I got on my phone right now. She goes, I am watching. And so therefore, honey, see, I did good, honey. So, so I'm just letting you know. Um, but anyway, she never has a bad attitude. So one of those deals, that is getting chaotic in our house, right? You guys don't never, you don't ever do that where you fight and you're, you're getting in trouble and stuff. We do, man. We, we sometimes, we have it. Everybody's got a bad attitude. And so I'm just like, everybody go to your room. Everybody, whatever. You, 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 you need Jesus. You guys all need Jesus. I'm cast the devil out of all of you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Satan has entered each and every one of you. You know, I start, then you, you get so mad, you start talking in the, in the King James version. Like, <laughs> You'd be like, you brood of vipers, you know, <laughs> who has told you to leave the wrath that is to come, you know, all this stuff, you know, and, and so you, cause you're trying to get a hold of your house and everything is just chaotic or whatever. So what is it that I do? And I'm praying, I'm like, God, I just want them out of the house. I just, I just, if you just, just take them right now, so just take them. As like, I now know why my parents acted the way they were. They, they, they just, we were horrible. I was just, I called my mom, mom, I'm so sorry. I was so bad. She goes, mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? She's. Mm-hmm. Which one is it this time? Like, <laughs> all of them, you know. <laughs> this past weekend, I'm going to get back to that story. There's a reason why I'm saying this. This past weekend, I was getting ready to get up to preach. And one of the things that I love to preach when I'm preaching and my parents are sitting there watching me. 
Another thing that I love is, is preaching in front of my spiritual parents because as I'm sitting there, Susan, Terry, Terry's taking notes, but Susan always got a smile on her face, you know. And so, but right before I get up, my dad pulled me aside and he said, he said, son, he goes, I want you to know I love you. He goes, I can't express the words of how I feel about you right now. He goes, if I were to try to tell you how I feel about you right now as you're walking on the stage, and I'm thinking, I, I got to get up and preach that. This is, <laughs> I got to get up and preach. He goes, if I was to get up and to tell you the words that I feel about you right now, I'd choke up and couldn't tell you. So right now, I'm going to give you a hug as you get up and preach. But know that when I go sit down, I'm the proudest person in this room. He said that to me. I was like, how are you going to do that when I'm going to get up and preach, man? You can't do that kind of stuff. What's wrong with you? Don't choke me up. I got jokes to tell, Dad. You know, I got a message to preach. And I'm telling you what, it was one of those things that God, when I got up, as he went to sit down, I got up, God said to me, you know what? Even more so than that, son, I love you too. And I'm proud of you too. And you're my favorite. And I'm with you. And his word that you're getting ready to preach, I'm with you. Let's do it together. I'm telling you what, there is something about when God does something for you that you cannot do for yourself. And he shows up in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the chaos, in the middle of the whatever it is that you're going on in your life. And I'm telling you what, why do you do that, God? I just want you to know, son, that I love you. I just want you to know, daughter, that I love you. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care about what they say on your job. I don't care about what you you're even saying about yourself. The labels that you put on yourself is not even close, not even what I'm saying about you because I want you to know that you're accepted in the beloved. I want you to know that you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. I want you to know that you are seated in heavenly places, that you've been given every spiritual blessing in heaven, everything that you need, everything that's been given to you that pertains to life and godliness. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the country. You're blessed going in. You're blessed coming out. When you lay down to sleep, you're blessed. Everywhere you go that you're blessed. And the reason why I'm doing it is because I love you. And the reason why I bless you, the reason why I come through for you, the reason why I'm there in the middle of the storm when you think you're by yourself is because I love you. It's the purpose of miracles. God, why are you doing this? Because I love you. It's about relationship. It's about an invitation. An invitation. Sometimes I don't take those invitations. Sometimes I try to do it on my own. Anybody else try to do stuff on their own? I try to do it on my own. It doesn't work out so well, does it? Well, I try to figure it out on my own. I'm trying to figure this out. God, I can do it on my own. God's like, would you, would you just let me? Would you just let me help? Would you just let me do it? Would you just call? I, there's an invitation here, right? I'm, it's feeling, I feel the presence of God right now. Anybody feel that? The presence of God is an invitation for you to come out of where you are and to, and to pull you into a place of relationship, of totally, of fully relying on God. Some of you are at a place where you're like, I don't have anything else. I have nothing else, God. I've given everything that I have. I've given you everything. I, I don't even know if I have any faith. I don't know if I have any trust. I don't know what to do. God's like, that's okay. I know where you are. And I am fully capable of directing you and moving you to the place that I've designed for you to be. Aren't you glad about that? Yeah. Aren't you glad that he won't leave you right where you are? Aren't you glad that there was a place where you were in darkness and the Bible says that, that he, he pulled you out of darkness and, and brought you into his marvelous light? Aren't you glad that you are not by yourself? Aren't you glad that he is, is the one who raised you up out of that place and he even is right now? <laughs> he is right now. No, he knows where you are going and he's navigating you and he's causing you. Some of you are in a storm and you can't see and the winds are beating up against your ship and the storm is there and you don't necessarily know where you are. I know that the master of the sea heard, he heard my despairing cry and from the waters lifted me and safe am I. It was love that lifted me. Right? What about, where am I, but what am I, and that's the thing, we get all flustered about where am I going? What's going, I don't know. I don't, God's like, would you just relax? 
God is capable. He's more than your mistakes. He's, he's more capable of, of, your, of your trying to do it on your own. But there's just an invitation. What am I to do? Just trust him. I trust you, Lord. I want you to say that right now. Lord, I trust you. I want you to close your eyes right where you are. And so I'm, I'm going to ask you to stand just a minute. But I, I, I just feel the Lord. I'm, I'm going to stop because I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel him. Some of you right now, the Lord's saying, hey, would you, will you, will you take my invitation? Will you get in? Will you put your seatbelt on? Would you sit back and let me take you to places that you've never gone before? Would you allow me to take you past your failures, past your trying to, past your works, past everything else, those labels that you put on yourself, the labels that people have put on you, things you've said about your finances, things you've said about your spouse, about your kids, about your situation that, that he has not said. Would you allow me, he's saying, would you allow me to take you past those things? Would you allow me to move you into a, a place, a position where you're poised for the presence of God? Hmm. He wants to do that right now. Some of you have been stuck. I'm just telling you this by revelation. Some of you have been stuck in this place for a long time. And the Lord says, I'm getting ready to move you out of that place. Pack up. Get your things. It's time to move. It's time to get up from the place that you are. Some of you have been in, have been in and the Lord's just, he's just saying this right now. Some of you have accepted things that God never intended for you to accept. Never intended for you to accept. Today, we're going to reject those things and we're going to receive the blessing of the Lord. Whether that's a healing, whether it's your marriage, whatever it is this morning. I believe God wants to release crazy faith because the purpose, the purpose of these miracles, the purpose of what he wants to do in your life is relationship. Invitation. If those are any, any of, of those things for you, right in your seat, I'm not asking you to stand up, just, just lift your both hands to the Lord. Just lift both hands to the Lord. God, I, you're, I, you're, you're doing something right now in me. You're doing something right now in me. So God, right now in Jesus' name, I am, I am asking you to break off any of the chains, Lord, that have held us back from moving forward in you. Any place, Lord, where there's been, a, where there's been setbacks and there's been failures and there's been those things we've tried to do and you're moving us into an invitation to trust you even more so, we say yes to that, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. And tell the Lord that. Say yes. I, I, I'm saying yes to you, God. We're saying yes to you, God, but we trust you and we, we believe you and the, and the purpose of, of these, of the miracles, the purpose of you doing this, Lord, is because we're saying yes to you and you are saying yes to us and we're colliding into, into who you are and we're thankful for that. Now just go ahead and thank the Lord. Just go ahead and tell him out of your own mouth. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for moving me. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not have to stay in the same place. Thank you, God, that it's a different day. Thank you that the old things are passed away and behold, the new has come. Thank you, Lord, that the enemy, that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Thank you, Lord, that you're raising that standard up against the enemy when he comes up against my life. Thank you, Lord, that I don't have to stay here. Thank you, Lord, that I'm moving forward in you, Lord. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Isn't God good? He's so good. Now I'm asking you to stand. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to pray a blessing over you. I'm telling you, I want you to be different because these, the miracles that God's doing in your life has everything to do with where he's taking you. And it's not, where you, it's not anywhere where you've been. God's taking you forward. Onward and upward. Amen. So, Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, that, you are, that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and it adds no sorrow to it. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust you. Even in the hardest, deepest places of our lives, we can trust you and we know that you are good. We know that you are good and you're a good, good father. And everything that you have in store for us, everything that you have in store for us, God, 
we want to say yes to you. And we bless your name and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, you're dismissed. And uh, won't you hug somebody or shake somebody's hand and tell them that you're glad that they're here. Have a great week.